Good morning, church. Good to be with you this morning. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Hope you're all having a, a, a great day and a great morning and getting some time to uh, celebrate mom this morning. Uh, let's pray, spend some time in worship, and then we'll come back for a Mother's Day message. God, thank you for moms. Thank you for this day that we get to uh, recognize our moms and celebrate them. And uh, Father, we just pray that you would join us today and that you would bless our time together in worship and in your word. We love you so much. Thank you for being so gracious and so kind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's worship. We'll come right back for the word. Thank you. 
transition from worship into your word. I pray that you would just join us and Holy Spirit, you would teach us and speak to us and um, that your presence would be made known. Lord, we love you so much and we thank you for who you are, for all that you do. Bless our time together. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. God bless you. Uh, for those of you who aren't able to make our uh, uh, gathering, our physical gathering that we have going on this morning, we've recorded this for you. And uh, I hope that you are encouraged and blessed by this message. I got a quick message this morning for you uh, on uh, Mother's Day. So we're going to stay according to the theme of the day, celebrating moms and uh, excited to just share and, and preach this message. Now I am going to kind of tie this in a little bit to the theme that we've been in and we're, we're on kind of this 50 day journey of Palm Sunday to Pentecost. And we've been discussing the 40 days Jesus was walking the earth after his death and resurrection. And the Bible tells us uh, that Jesus had an agenda. Um, now, we've read this many times since the theme verse for our series, Luke 19, 41. Now, as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace. So we've been talking about the things that make for your peace. Why was Jesus weeping over Jerusalem as they were celebrating him entering into uh, the city? Well, it's because they were celebrating the wrong thing. And Jesus was like, if you just understood the things that truly make for peace, um, you know, that, that's what I was hoping for you, right? Uh, and then it said, the Bible tells us that for 40 days after he resurrected, he walked the earth. And it says, during the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time. And he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Now, we know that the Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was setting up, setting the stage creating the way for each of us to receive the Holy Spirit, to experience righteousness, peace, and joy today and forever. Now, his over these 40 days, he also met with different people from time to time, and he discussed different things that we've been going over uh, that are related to the kingdom of God and that are related to the things that make for your peace. And today... I want to suggest to you that one of the things that makes for your peace is honoring your mother. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. Honor, the word honor, means to fix value. Think about, it's funny because we give honor to, to certain people and we don't give honor to certain people. And, you know, our society is a little strange and a little maybe backwards in some ways on where and who we give honor to. Um, but one of the easiest ways for me to explain honor, I guess, would be if you were to take maybe a conference or a concert or uh, an awards ceremony or something like that, where a famous person um, or a person who has achieved great things is uh, recognized on a stage and what happens. Typically, everyone in the room uh, gives them a standing ovation, wants to meet them, wants to shake their hand, wants to get an autograph, whatever it might be. Why? Because they value that person. They placed a high value on that individual. Well, this word honor is that type of value. So the Bible says that we are to honor our mother and father. Ephesians 6.2 is our main scripture for today. And this will be a very familiar one for most of you. Ephesians 6.2 says this, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. So interesting that God tied together this first commandment with a promise that it would go well with you and that you would live long on the earth. How? When you honor your father and mother. So there's something that God really, really believes in and really cares about when it comes to honoring uh, moms and dads, right? Let's pray. God, thank you again for your word. Thank you for um, mom. Thank you for dad. Thank you for 
uh, our family. Thank you for just blessing us and caring for us and putting us together. And Lord, I just pray that uh, family relationships, moms and sons and daughters relationships today would be uh, mended where they're broken, would be strengthened and healed where they need it, would be encouraged even greater for those that are doing well and healthy. Lord, we just thank you for um, all that you do. We thank you for miracles. We thank you for your help in every situation. God, let us celebrate today, Mother's Day, and uh, enjoy our day together and enjoy doing so. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right. So, how important are moms to God? There's a good question for you to think about for a second. How important are moms to God? Can you think of any scriptures? Can you think of any verses? Can you think of anything uh, that might answer that question? God speaks to mothers and speaks to the significance and importance of mothers in scripture quite a few times throughout the whole Old and New Testament. But I can think of two significant times that God demonstrated his care and his love for moms. First, when Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments, God thought it important enough that right before he talks about don't steal, and he tells the people, look, you're not to steal, you're not to commit adultery, right? Those are serious offenses. Those are things that people go to jail for. Those are things that our society even today thinks are extremely important, right? I mean, we have legal systems set up to, to enforce these kinds of issues. Stealing, adultery, and murder, right? I mean, these are significant, very serious things. Do not murder is one of the Ten Commandments, right? And yet, right before God says, do not murder, what does he say? Honor your mother. Honor your mother and father. And there were some serious consequences to not honoring your mother and father in the Old Testament. But God thought... God thinks moms are so important that in 10 commandments that he gave to the nation, lumped in with don't murder, God says, honor your mother and your father. And if that wasn't enough to understand how important God feels moms are, then all we have to do is look to the cross. Jesus, beaten, bloody, exhausted, out of breath, bleeding, suffering, with the sin and the weight of the world upon him, the curses of the world upon him, takes it upon himself to only say a few things that are recorded in scripture while he is on the cross. He talks to the thieves, tells them about salvation. He speaks to his father. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he looks at his best friend and says, take care of my mom. John 19, 25, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus then saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, that was John, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour the disciple took her into his own household. So how important does God think moms are? God thinks moms are so important that he put right in the beginning in the Ten Commandments that 
right alongside don't murder, he said to honor your mother and your father. And he thinks moms are so important that while he was dying on the cross, forgiving the sins of the world, he made sure his mom was taken care of by his best friend, John. And it says that John took her into his household and cared for her from that point on. So God cares about moms a lot. So how do we honor our mother? What can we do as people to honor our mother? Well, God specifically speaks of a few things and gives us some scriptures to understand. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about today, before we get into some of the practical specifics, and there's just a few and it's kind of a, a short message this morning, but um, number one, God chose you and your mom for each other. Psalm 139, 13 says, For you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. It was it, God knows every piece and part about who you are and who your mom is. And God planned it that you would be fashioned the way that you are in your mother's womb. God could have fashioned you in anyone, but he chose you and he chose your mom and he fashioned you together. Neither of you had a choice in the matter. Now, for those of you who are adopted, you have an, a, a wonderful, special blessing because you were chosen by your mother. For those of you who were adopted, you have a special blessing. So some of us, some people are living with their mother, their birth mother, and They've got, the, and, and they're living with their mom who God fashioned you to have this relationship. And then some of us who are adopted, you're living with your, your adopted mother who chose you. There's a special blessing on that. But God has placed the two of you together. You are your mom's son or daughter, and she is your mom. And one more thing I want to mention before I get into some of the practicalities is that I recognize and I realize that in some mother and daughter son relationships, there are rough patches and maybe even brokenness. And I want to say that perhaps one of the best ways that you can honor your mom when you have a situation like that is to be honest. The Bible says that the truth will set you free. And in many times and in many cases, one of the roughest or the, the biggest challenges and the toughest things going on between these relation in these relationships is that there's not honesty and there's not a willingness to have the tough conversation because it is hard. But sometimes if you can get to the point where there is honest and real talk, a willingness to listen and be heard, a willingness to communicate truth of hurts or offenses or whatever it might be, a willingness to acknowledge those, a willingness to understand and respect on both sides. It takes courage to have those conversations, but the Bible says that the truth will set you free. And so one of the greatest ways that you can honor is through honesty. And so it's important for us to know that God chose the mom and son or daughter relationship that we have. And even if it's a rough one, there should be a place and a time for honesty in order to try to honor that relationship. Now, what are some practicalities, some practical things that we can do to honor mom? Leviticus 19.3. Every one of you shall reverence his mother and his father. So reverence and respect 
are one thing that we can do to show honor to our mother. Uh, what is reverence? Uh, reverence is a little bit of godly fear. Okay? Did your mom ever put a little godly fear in you while you were growing up? A little bit of, uh, you know, re reverence is to look and to, to have this respect and awe and honor with a little tinge of, you know, fear, right? I mean, I know some, uh, some folks who are some rough people. I've known some kids who are some rough kids. I mean, as a youth pastor, I got to see some kids who were pretty rough and they made some pretty rough decisions, right? And uh, yet they could get one look from their mom and mom could whip them into shape real quick. I, I think about, uh, oh, what movie? I think it was uh, Jumanji. Was that the movie that it was? Maybe it wasn't Jumanji, but I watched a movie with The Rock, right? Um, I never endorse any of the movies that I watch, by the way. I try to watch them through VidAngel. So if you've never heard of VidAngel, get it. VidAngel allows you to set filters on your movies and you can watch the movies without having any of the things that you don't want in them if you feel like they're morally wrong, okay? Uh, but anyways, I saw this movie with The Rock. And in this movie with The Rock, he goes uh, home after not being home for a long time. And his, the, you know, it's got this Samoan family and his brothers, they're rough. Like, I mean, these, they, they're just, they're big and strong and fighting and the whole thing. But when mama walks into the room and kind of looks at everybody, all the big, rough, tough boys who are all, you know, two feet taller than her, they all kind of show respect and back down to mom, right? So a little bit of uh, discipline while kids are growing up, mom goes a long way. They'll remember it their whole life. Uh, but a little bit of godly fear, some, some reverence and respect is a way to show honor to your mom. Number two, Proverbs 23, 22. Listen to your father who begot you and do not despise your mother when she is old. This is a big one in our society. To despise means to look down upon um, as unimportant and unfortunately we live in a nation probably the only nation or one of the only nations in the entire world that tends to look down upon um, our elders uh, as unimportant um, I think the things that we value in our culture tend to be more focused on what can you produce um, what how can you make money you know things like that and so when you look at our culture a lot of times our culture is more focused on the next generation and, and the youth and not so much uh the people who are older um and so god go, takes his chance here to say do not despise your mother when she is older do not look down on your mother as unimportant you know, and some of you are like, well, you don't know my mom. Oh, no, I don't. But God does. And he felt it necessary to write that in his book. Right. So, uh, I mean, Mary wasn't necessarily perfect as a mom, was she? Some of you are like cringing right now. Like, how can I say that? Well, she did happen to leave her son on a road trip uh, back in the town that they were visiting and forgot him there and made it pretty much all the way home before she realized, oh my gosh, where's Jesus, right? <laughs> so she made some mistakes along the way too, uh, but Jesus still loved her and cared for her. And uh, so do not despise your mother when she is older. So then if we're not to despise, what are we to do? Appreciate, right? A appreciate your mom. Um, regard her as important. Um, when when you become an adult, for those of you who are not yet, um, and for those of you who are, when you become an adult, you realize what goes into parenting. It's selfless. It takes a lot of time and work, and um, and it's obviously a great privilege and honor, and you love doing it. Um, but uh, I know that you know. I know I caused probably some pretty tough days uh, for my mom growing up. Uh, I remember one 4th of July 
we had a bunch of fireworks. We basically broke all our fireworks apart and poured as much of the uh, the powder that was inside these things into a big two liter bottle. And so in our neighborhood, we had a cul-de-sac and everybody kind of lined the streets with their lawn chairs. And they were the good old lawn chairs, you know what I'm saying, that were made out of that like really light aluminum and they just folded in half and then you could unfold them and they had the strips of the nylon stuff. Anyway, uh, everybody would line the streets there and it would get dark and, and people would light their fireworks and barbecue out front and stuff like that. And I remember me and about three or four of my friends, we had this big two liter bottle full of as much of those fireworks that we could think of. And uh, so we went out and we stuck it on the curb and we lit that thing trying to scare everybody. And this thing blew up, took a chunk out of our sidewalk uh, or our curb, the edge of the curb on, on the side of our street near our driveway in front of our house and caught the tree on fire that was out in front of our house. So now the tree is up in flames, right? <laughs> so he had to run, grab a hose, come back and try to put this thing out, right? So I know that, uh, that, I probably put my parents through some uh, pretty rough experiences, right? I, th th my parents were nice. They, they bought me a car when I turned 16. And I think it was less than a year uh, that I took that little two-wheel drive, front-wheel drive Chevy Spectrum, a small little car, and decided that it would be a good idea to try to go four-wheel drive or four by and out in the park that was in our neighborhood, right? So me and my friends jumped into the car. It was a muddy, swampy, wet, rainy night. And we went out to the baseball field at the local park and tried to go drive through the outfield and do cookies and stuff. And of course, I got about 100 feet and then the car just sunk down into the mud and I had to call a tow truck to get it out. And my parents obviously were not happy about that. So. As you get older, you realize the things, especially when you become a parent, you realize what it means to be a parent. And so, um, you know, you can learn, you can look and, and appreciate your mom. One way to honor her is to appreciate her because uh, there's a lot of things, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of cooking, a lot of all kinds of things that go into raising you. Right? And you can always find some things uh, that mom did that you can appreciate. Another way that we can honor mom, the Bible says, is to listen to her teaching. Proverbs 6.20 My son, observe the commandments of your father and do not forsake the teaching of your mother. Bind them continually on your heart. Till, tie them around your neck. When you walk about, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will talk to you. For the commandment is a lamp and a teaching is a light. And reproof and discipline are the way of life. So the um, one thing we can do to honor mom, listen to her teaching. Um, as we get older, sometimes it gets harder for us to be willing to do so, right? Uh, some of us went to some pretty fancy colleges and got some pretty fancy degrees at university. And so then we think, well, we know a lot more than mom. And it may be true. Maybe, maybe mom sacrificed and gave you an opportunity to go to a college and to get educated in a way where you are better and more book smart and educated than she is in certain things. But you may go and get a degree. You may go and get a fancy job. And then you may experience a rough patch with the boss, right? And it's likely that as much book smarts as you have, it's not going to help you through that life experience where mom may either have herself or have known someone who has dealt with five different bosses who have different personality types and different situations that they've gone through. And so there's wisdom that they can share, right? I remember there was a scene in Goodwill Hunting. Again, don't endorse the movie. So if you're going to watch it, watch it through VidAngel. But I remember a scene in Goodwill Hunting, where uh, this kid Will, right, is a genius. Um, I mean, world-class genius. Everybody in the world wants him to come work for him. Every, they, they're just blown away by his thinking ability and math, just all the different stuff, right? And Robin Williams, he plays a psychiatrist because 
Uh, Will is an orphan, and so he has major uh, relational and emotional issues and all these other things, but he's just an absolute smart, genius individual. And Robin Williams is tasked to try to help him. Well, there's been like five other psychiatrists that have tried to help him prior to this, and they all quit because he outwits them. And so he gets with Robin Williams and he tries to outwit Robin Williams. Well, Robin, Robin by making a comment about the a painting in Robin Williams' office. Anyway, the next scene, they're sitting in a park and Robin Williams looks at him and he says, you know, after you said what you said, I went home and I couldn't sleep. I wrestled and I struggled with the things that you said until something occurred to me and then I fell into a deep sleep, he says, and I never thought about you again since. And he says, you're just a kid. If I asked you about art, you would probably tell me about every art book ever written. And he names some fam famous art artists and things like that. And he says, but I'll bet you can't tell me what it smells like in the Sixteen Chapel. I'll bet you've never stood there and looked up at the beautiful ceiling. And then he said, if I asked you about war, you would throw Shakespeare at me. But you have never been near one. You've never held your best friend's head in your lap and watched him gasp for air as he took his last breath. And he goes on and on to say these different experiences that he himself has had. And he says, I, there's nothing I can't learn from you that's not in a book. So what's the point here? The point is, honor mom by listening to her teaching. Mom's got wisdom. Uh, mom has had experiences. And uh, so even if we have some book smarts or we feel like we're smarter, right? A lot of cases, probably not. But even if you think you are, the wisdom and the life experience is valuable. Next way, just uh, one more. Bring her joy. Proverbs 23, 25. Let your father and your mother be glad and let her rejoice who gave birth to you. Could you say that your mom rejoices that she gave birth to you? <laughs> right? Do some things from time to time that make her glad. Do some things that make her rejoice. Uh, I heard a stat on the radio recently that the number one gift that moms want for Mother's Day, can you guess it? It's a card. A card. Why? Because mom just wants to know that she's loved. Mom wants to know that you care. Mom wants to know that she made an impact on your life. It doesn't take a lot to honor mom necessarily. The currency of honoring mom is love. Love and more love. Um, you know, even as a dad, I, I have a, a, a folder in my office where I keep my kids' handmade gifts for me, right? They're my favorite. I'll hold on to them forever. Mom just wants to know that love. So this Mother's Day, remind mom that she's important. This Mother's Day, remind mom that she made an impact on your life. This Mother's Day, remind mom uh, that she is loved. Doesn't take a lot. She just wants to hear your voice, talk to you, know that you made an impact. Does God care about moms? A lot. Ten Commandments, while on the cross, all the scriptures that tell us. So we know that mom cares, or that God cares. And so we should too. So honor your mom this Mother's Day. And I hope that you all have a wonderful and blessed Sunday. And you get to go have some awesome Mother's Day brunches. Hopefully you're living in a place that will allow you to. And uh, God bless all you moms. May God's blessing and favor be upon you and his grace be upon you. Uh, have a fantastic Mother's Day. Let's pray. God, thank you for moms. Thank you for um, the relationships. Lord, I pray again, heal the broken relationships between moms and kids. And God, I pray that moms would be honored today and that you uh, would just Pour out your favor, your grace, and your blessing upon them, and that they would experience such a wonderful day and so much love from the kiddos. 
We love you so much. Thank you for who you are, for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Happy Mother's Day. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you real soon.